hi guys this is tech howdy i welcome you to this video tutorial on creating a featured image slider using angular 8 and asp.net core in the last video tutorial we updated the angular cli to version 8 uh, as we know that the when we created the application the default version was version 6 and now we have updated it in this video tutorial we will learn how we can run this application in visual studio code editor now the first thing that we want to do before we do any changes in Visual Studio Code, we go to the project folder and then we right click on the project folder and make sure that we give the project folder and all the subfolders. The access needs to be granted here so we don't get any errors when we build our project. So make sure that if you are on a Mac, you give your folders uh, and all these subfolders inside your project folder access to read and write. So I've given the users read and write options, but you have to click on this lock option, unlock it, and then make sure that you assign read and write options to different users that you want to, who are going to access this folder. And also make sure that you click and apply these to all enclosed items. So are you sure you want to apply this? Let's click OK. So once you click this, all these settings will be applied to all the subfolders and files in this particular folder. So we don't have to individually do it on each folder. Once this is done, we can close this lock and we can close our get info window. Next thing, going back to Visual Studio Code, go to the add-on section your extension section make sure you download the following extensions one uh, c sharp for visual studio code powered by omni sharp make sure you have the latest version of this currently the version that i have installed is 1.20 and that is the latest version available at the time of recording this video the next extension that you want to download is the debugger for chrome since we are going to use Chrome to debug our application, please install this debugger for Chrome add-on. And that should be it for all the extensions that we need. Next thing that we want to do is go to this option here which says uh, Terminal and open a new terminal. Now, before we build this application, we need to update the SDK in which we are going to create this application. So to update the SDK, go to the following link in your browser. So what we want to do is we want to open uh, the following link in the browser. I'll provide the link in the video description and download the stable, most stable version of uh, ASP.NET Core SDK. So we have the SDK 2.2.3 for Mac OS since I am on Mac OS operating system so I'm going to download the .NET Core installer and once the installer has been downloaded I'm going to install the .NET Core 2.2 SDK so when I build my application I have the latest version of this SDK if you want to use the version 2.2.5 or you can use we want to use a, any other version you can do so but this is the stable version so i'll use that if you have any other version that you want to use you're free to do so so but for now i'm going to use 2.2.3 and i've downloaded the sdk once you click on the downloaded file you should get an installation window like this make sure you hit continue and install the sdk once you have installed the sdk you can check the version of SDK that is installed by .NET dash dash version and you should get 2.2.3 in the integrated terminal of Visual Studio Code. Now the next thing that we want to do is build our application since we have updated the Angular applications version and also our SDK. We want to make sure we don't have any errors. So let's run the command .NET build. So what we want to do is sudo .NET build enter our password and now the integrated terminal will run certain commands 
and compile the code and our build is succeeded there were no errors now we can run our application by typing the following command which is dot net run and once we enter this command we will see the application load in our browser uh, since we have a link over here which says http localhost we can copy this go to our browser and paste this and hit enter and our application should load because our server is now running we have the we have run the following command so our server is running uh, on port 5001 so our application is live and we can see uh, that the angular application is working fine but we don't want to run uh, type the command always dot net run so we want visual studio code to be running the application like visual studio code ide so what we want to do is first thing hit command c to stop the server then go to debug and hit start debugging now it's going to ask you to select an environment i'm going to select the dotnet core environment and once i select that you will see that there is some code added and a launch.json file created and a task.json file created as well so in, you see that it has added some bunch of code that is needed for us to launch this particular application in the browser so now if i go to start start debug and i click start debugging you will see there is an option here which says debug and there is a uh, debug window as well over here so application is still loading since it's the first time it's compiling the code so now our application is running so we didn't have to type the command we could we can just hit debug and start debugging make sure if you application doesn't run here in the drop down you have the following option which is web selected instead of attach so you want dot net core launch web instead of the attach option and then run the application so it should run in the browser now to check if our debugger is working and we can hit all debugging breakpoints what we want to do is go to our file section and then go to the sample data controller here i have created a test method and i have also have some method that was created this is a sample controller that was created when we built or created this application in asp.net core so by default it was created for us now to test this method you can set a breakpoint on both these methods uh, or you can just set a breakpoint on this method since you might not have the test method so you, you can set a breakpoint here and to call the method we need to call this class by using the api for slash controller url so i'll show you so in your browser so what you're going to do is forward slash api forward slash uh, the controller's name which is sample data and then the action method name which is weather forecast weather forecasts so the action method name is weather forecast and then you can hit enter and once you hit enter the breakpoint will be hit and you see that the code has stopped processing and unless you hit the step over or the continue button here the process will not go further so if i hit the step over button it goes to the next line and if i have to just hit the continue button the method should execute and i should get the result of the query now let's call the other method here which is weather forecast test and once again the result what i should see on my browser is the string test so let's continue this go to my browser and i see test so a debugger is working as it's ex expected to work so this is how we are going to set up and run the application in visual studio code for these two files 
that were created, which is launch.json and tasks.json, which will contain the required uh, code to run and to build the application. So this, uh, if this file was not created or if this code is not available to you, I will provide this in the video description so you can create the launch.json file and the task.json file. It should automatically create it unless you have not provided the permissions that we granted when we started this video. I showed you how you can give the read and write access to this project folder. If you have not given the read and write access to the folder, then in that case, you will have an error where you would have to manually create this otherwise it will automatically create this file when soon as you start debugging so this should be it for this video tutorial all the required links will be provided in the video description if you have any questions use the comment section once again please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy and wait for the next video tutorial